as of today, May 4th, 2019, Philadelphia's record in the past week has been 7-3-1. and one. With the Phillies going 3-1, and one, winning one series, the Soul going 1-0, and oh, the Union going 1-0, and, oh, and the Sixers going 1-1. One and one. So much to talk about, as always. All this and more on the Orange Line. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's always good to see you for another edition of The Orange Line, uh, your first and only 8 for 8 sports podcast in Philadelphia. I'm your host, as always, Dr. PhD. And uh, as always, I guess, um, uh, a whole lot to talk about in in Philadelphia sports news. Um, And uh, I really really do not know where to start. Uh, well, I'll, I'll say this. Um, in terms of everything that has gone on, uh, there are two sports that have, well, absolutely nothing going on for them. Well, not nothing, but nothing reportable. The two sports I'm talking about are the Flyers and the Wings. They uh, both concluded their seasons not too long ago, and while the Wings have kind of been flying under the radar for the most part, haven't had too much to talk about, uh, except for, you know, Matt Rambo and Trevor Baptiste being a beast as always, um, just, you know, not too much else. And uh, as for the Flyers, well, they've been, they've been hot with news since, uh, well, since I started the podcast. It's been a really long time since there just wasn't much to talk about with the Flyers. So honestly, it's kind of nice to take a break. I know I'm all flyered out today, but it's, it's nice to be kind of over that stuff. Um, but I guess the one thing that, uh, we can go into is talking about the Phillies, uh, if you follow me on social media, uh, which would be at Dr. PhD or the podcast at Orange Line Pod, uh, you would know I was trying to live tweet last night's game because I was at the uh, the Phillies versus Tigers game. Um, it was great. It was uh, a fun time. Started out hot uh, with a quick run. Then things kind of cooled down a little bit, as things do. Uh, but the bats really lit up at the uh, the end of the game. So that was great to see from the boys. And uh, they actually had a pretty good week, as you can see over at the board there. Um, the Phillies went 3-1. and um, one? Did I say 3-1? and one? Oh, They went 4-2. and two. I'm so stupid. Um, well, now that you know that this thing is, you know, not airtight. But, uh, yeah. So they they've done very well in the past uh, you know week or so uh, because they were kind of on a slump for a hot minute. Um, you know, taking a look at the schedule right now, going back um, just in the past week, they did have uh, three wins, but uh, um, two losses, and then going back even further than that, you can see boom, 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 boom. There's so many losses for this team and uh it, it it just pretty much meant that uh some of our bigger bats weren't really connecting so mm, it's nice to see them back at least um harper still needs to get back into form get into form i don't know i don't know what you want to say but he starts he needs to be a bit more bryce harper you know hit some dingers uh really spark a flame under this team really get them going um but uh someone like um you know uh Andrew McCutcheon he's really stepped up to the plate literally um 
and uh, been like a, a really nice, I guess, veteran presence for the team. He's been hitting at leadoff and doing a very good job, I'll say. I'll, I'll say it. He does a very good job um, leading off for the boys, and uh, at least from what I've seen, it seems like he uh, has a, a, a good gauge on everything right now. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I am trying to say that he's doing a good job. So keep up the good work, Andrew McCutcheon. Um, as for everyone else on the team, Reese Hoskins hit a home run last night. That's awesome. We always love seeing that from the big fella. Uh, that's that's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to hit some dingers. So good for him. It's nice to have Gene Segura back. I believe the one stat that's been like sticking in my head, I might be getting it slightly wrong or very wrong. I think slightly wrong. But uh, apparently the stat was that Gene Segura um, on the team is you know ends up meaning that the Phillies score like eight point something runs uh but when he was not with the team they ended up scoring like 2.6 runs or something like that I don't know like I I can't remember the you know numbers exactly but uh I can tell you that he uh is very helpful for this team so uh great to have him back as always uh it's gonna be good when this team can re get healthy get healthy again um just because well they they have the potential to be the absolute best lineup in all of the mlb it kind of just relies on them being healthy them making contact with the ball other than that i i'm really enjoying this team aaron nola if i can shout you out right now your jersey's over there I feel like it might be tainted, but what the hell are you doing? Aaron Nola has so far been my disappointment of the season. He's he's not performing like Aaron Nola. He's not getting the job done, and it was kind of similar last night. He he you know pitched so many pitches. Yeah, he pitched so many pitches. Uh, within like three innings, I believe I I looked up and I was like, "How's this guy already at like sixty seven pitches, and he's only pitched two and two thirds? Something's not right. Something isn't adding up." Well, the pitches were adding up, and uh, he got into a little bit of a jam a couple of times, and he's he's just not performing like he should. Uh it's so upsetting to see. We want to see this guy succeed. I want to see this guy succeed. He's He has the potential to be one of the best pitchers in the entire MLB, just like we have the potential to be one of the best lines in the MLB. And he's just not doing it yet. I still have faith. I always keep my faith. He's not there yet. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, In terms of some other stuff... Another team that is red hot, I'll say, is the Union. Philadelphia Union picked up a win and a tie this week, which I believe moves them to 5-3-2. and two? We're going to check that right now. Um, but just last night, Wednesday night, they picked up a big win. Look at that first place. Got to love it. Yeah, they're 5-3-2, and two, um, and they're, they're doing work. Obviously, they're doing most of the work at home. They have a uh, a record of four one and zero, oh, so a lot of their more point giving games, I guess. I don't know. Uh, most of their wins are coming from home, which is a good thing. I I enjoy winning at home. I enjoy when my team wins in front of me, and. Uh, I mean, away they're one, two, and two, so it's not like they're terrible. They're on the upswing. They're still on the upswing. I'm telling you, this team has a lot more that they can do. Um, but this last week was uh, pretty proving of that. Like I said, um, just last night they uh, they they walked away with a win against Cincinnati at home. Uh, gotta love it when the boys do something like that. Um, 
and before that, they uh, they had their game against Vancouver on Saturday, which uh, ended up being one and one. I believe I assumed that they were going to win that game. If I'm right, mm, I'm not going to go back in the database. But from what I can remember, yeah, Vancouver wasn't doing too good in the Western Conference. So I was like, oh, we are gonna, we're going to win this one, no problem. I also said last week that there was only one game for the Union. I'm going to point out all of my mistakes. We're all human. This is what happens. Um, but yeah, so the Union are absolutely on a roll right now if you couldn't tell, which is, you know, what we love to see here in Philadelphia. Who doesn't want to see the Union, our home team, just take it to some of the other teams? I know I do. And the fact that they're in first place right now is incredible. Um, Taking a look at their schedule, though, they have one game, one game this week. I double-checked it. I triple-checked it. I almost quadruple checked it, but I thought that was too much. Um, but playing at home once again against New England Revolution, let's beat them so bad. Um, if you don't know, I I'm not the biggest fan of New England sports, um, which you know kind of sucks because I got a uh, I got homies in New England. It's just that you know I. I can't like those teams. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Um, (laughs) But yes, we have New England this Saturday the 4th back at home. So uh, I'm excited. This team is on a roll, like I said. Like I will continue to say. And look at this. If you're not aware, if you're not seeing the visual here. We're looking at the standings, and New England is number 12 in the Western Conference, Eastern Conference, whoops. Uh, um, that puts them right in last place. Ooh, you hate to see it, except you love to see it. So, that's great. That's great. Um, I'm hoping for a great week this week. Um, past week was great. You see that record over there? Seven three and one? Seven three and two? Seven three and one. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. <laughs> but um yeah. It's been nice to be a Union fan. It's been nice to be a Phillies fan. And it has absolutely been nice to be a Soul fan. Who doesn't love the Philadelphia Soul? I do. You should too. Arena football is all the excitement of football at a quicker pace, you know, things uh things can happen pretty intensely. You're you're boxed in, so getting slammed into a wall. Kickoffs are different, passes are different, the rules to the game have changed, but it doesn't mean it's not exciting. That's what Philadelphia Soul football is, and it's finally back. Oh my goodness, I'm excited. I'm ecstatic at the fact that we have the heart and soul of Philadelphia back. Our champions. Our champions. And they played like that on Saturday. Played like that on Saturday. At picking up a win over the brand new team of the Atlantic City Blackjacks. 48-41. to And from what I've been told, unfortunately I was not able to go to the game. Circumstances happened. But that's not the point. From what I've been told, it was a nice come-from-behind win in which, uh, from what the stories go, there was a questionable call on uh, Atlantic City's part where uh, they, I believe, kicked an onside kick that just didn't go their way. Um, So that's great. Uh, and, uh, as you can see on my screen, on your screen, if you're watching this on YouTube, we picked up the, uh, the win 48 to 41, had the lead at the end, but it was tough. It was close. It was a close one. Um, but yeah, with the game tied, Atlantic City kicks the ball 
onside kick. They don't recover it. We're able to come back, get the win, and celebrate. Sorry, new guys, but you got to learn right now that you're just not going to be able to step to the champs right away. Tell them, Rock. I, if I had a sound bite of the Rock, I would have, I would have played it, but I do not. Other than that, it was a pretty big game. Uh, I had some stats uh, thrown up to the side. Um, Adrian Ferns, who uh, I believe caught three touchdowns. No, ran for three touchdowns. Yeah, he had three touchdowns in the game. So you gotta love when uh, when your offense is putting up numbers just like that. And James Roman, who uh, I think I only saw he had one interception, one or two interceptions, but he is now the holder for franchise uh, interceptions for the Philadelphia Soul at 33. Yeah, at 33. And our QB, Red, Dan Radball, I believe his, is how it's pronounced. I don't know. I'm very bad with names, as you uh, may have already seen. But uh, our quarterback was uh, pretty good. I believe he... Um, was 21 for 31, um, had a passing touchdown as well. So good for him. Things are looking good for this team. If we look ahead, which I will do since I'm on their Twitter. Um, oh my goodness. I don't even know how to spell. If we take a look ahead, we can see that in week two, we're going to be at Baltimore. So, we're just going to have to lock it down in Baltimore. As we do, uh, the next time they'll be back is in two weeks. But uh, we have tomorrow, Friday, to look forward to. Taking on Baltimore. Taking on some chumps. Everyone in the NLL, they're all busters. Everyone in the AFL, they're all chumps. That's the way it goes sometimes. So... With that being said, it's great to be a Soul fan. Who doesn't love to be a Soul fan? I absolutely love to be a Soul fan. They did great. They did great. 41 uh, points allowed isn't exactly what I want, but 48 points, being able to conquer a team that could have been a surprise. It could have been an unknown factor. Uh, just you love to see it. You love to see the wins like that. So good on the Soul but let's move ahead. Let's move ahead to Overwatch. One of my favorite sports right now. Should be one of yours. Always interesting. I won't talk about it too much right now, though. Fusion are wrapping up week five of stage two. Like I said last week, we didn't have any games. So it was going to be very important for us to keep an eye on some things. And right now... It's not looking good for the boys. It's not looking good for the boys. The Fusion are down to 11th place, which puts them out of the stage playoffs cut. Um, so with a win here tonight, it would be very nice, but we would need some other external factors out there um, to uh, really help us out. We do have San Francisco tonight at uh, 10.15. So... Um, yeah, it's Thursday. And what do we do on Thursdays? We watch Overwatch. I don't know. I I was trying to think of something clever for that. Obviously, it did not work. But we're going to cheer on the boys as we do. Because that's what this whole thing is about. Um, so with a win here, like I said, it could propel us into the stage playoffs. Get some shmoney. But it does not look favorable for us. So I said, that's okay. That's okay. Give them a bit of a break. Let them work on GOATS, the composition that uh, is dominating play right now. Or let them work on some other strats, see if uh, something might be helpful. Who knows? Uh, but give them time to rest and you know study the game a little bit more. Change some things up. Do whatever they can. 
Um, that's what I'm hoping for. We also have a break coming up because we have the All-Star break. There's going to be a whole bunch of time for us to uh, sit back, relax, enjoy some high-level play, but also enjoy um, some time off, I guess. Uh, If there are any um, updates on the game, I'll keep uh, you guys updated, and um, that way you can understand what might be changing coming up ahead. And this is great to see. This is what you love to see. We're looking at the All-Stars right now, and boom, two of them are from your favorite Philadelphia-based Overwatch team, the Fusion. We have Carpe, of course, and Poco um, getting in there, starting for the Overwatch League All-Stars. You got to love it. Um, It does suck that we have to play with two players from New York because those guys are stupid. But it's great to see that uh, two of our best players are getting the light shown on them, shined on them. They get to be in the spotlight and uh, really show what Philadelphia Overwatch is all about. These two guys right here. I'd love to see Carpe tear it up. Also, shout out to Guxy um, on the Pacific Division team, only because... How do you not love the Hungzhou Spark? Other than that, uh, we do have that one game coming up this week. One match coming up this week. Um, which could lead to some good news, could lead to some bad news. It's all depending on what the rest of the league does and what we do tonight. So let's go Fusion. Um... And you got to love Overwatch. You got to love everything. Everything, everything, everything. Um, Just like callers, I do love callers. If anyone would like to uh, speak their mind a little bit about one, two, multiple sports, please let me know. I would love to have your thoughts and opinions. Even if you tweet at me, comment something on a video, um, or go to the Facebook page, Orange Line Podcast, um, I would absolutely love to hear some other people's opinions. It's, it's, it's going to be helpful for me to hear what you guys are thinking. Cause right now this is all my opinion. This is all what I think. And as much as that might be interesting, I would love to hear what you think. So that way I can debate with you and tell you that I'm, you know, way more right than you are and you're just wrong. Or you can just be like, well, statistically, you're stupid. And uh, then you pretty much got me there. But yeah, please, let me know what some of your opinions are. I'd love to hear them. Um, and last week we heard um, Tegan's opinion, our first caller. And Tegan, uh, he gave some draft picks away. I did see that when the draft was going on, he tweeted out that he didn't think... The Eagles had a good draft. But like I said last week, he is a bit opinionated. He does he does have uh, some opinions that not everyone would agree with. They might be off the beaten path. But so far, I think things could be pretty good for us. See, we had five picks in the draft. We're looking at them right now, and things are nice. I think they're nice. But let's let's go through them one at a time. In the first round and 22nd pick, because we traded up to it, I can't remember what team we got it from, but we got Andre Dillard, offensive tackle from Washington State. And on the website I'm looking at, NBC Sports, they uh, they have a nice little graph, and it shows that he is very good at being fast, very good at getting up there. And uh, the thing I think is most important is uh, that he is 
a good talent that can help protect one of our better talents. Offensive tackle is, you know, one of those guys that's on the offensive line and kind of speaks for itself a little bit. I don't know. Um, but they, uh, they're, they're going to be the people that are going to help keep Carson Wentz safe. So I think this is a good choice just based on the position and how high up in the rounds and everything like that. That's all I can really say on a basic level. I don't know these picks too well, but I would absolutely love to get to know them as this offseason continues. But for right now, um, I'm happy that Andre Dillard is here. Our second pick came in the second round, 21st, 53rd overall, Miles Sanders, a Penn State boy. Um, Running back gets picked up, adding to the system, I guess. Uh, I don't know why, but I think if... The Eagles keep adding running backs just more and more and more and more. We're, we're going to be an unbeatable team. When we have like a billion running backs, that's when we were the best. I, I think the logic is there. We should really look into that. But we got Miles Sanders uh, running back out of Penn State. It's great. I think uh, from what I heard, he's going to mostly be like a utility running back. Um you know, just when people need breathers and, you know, punch things in, I guess. I don't know. Um, after that, in the second round as well, we got J.J. Arcega Whiteside, a wide receiver, um, hopefully giving um, Carson Wentz another target to give the ball to. We can't rely on Zach Ertz and Alshon Jeffy forever. So, yeah, it's going to be nice to see if he can add more of an offensive threat to this team that can be very good offensively to begin with. After that, we have another Penn State guy, Sharif Miller, um, defensive end. Um, I don't know what to make of this, if I'll be honest. This is one of the ones that I didn't really have much of any story to talk about, uh, but I see right here he is a solid run defender. So that's nice. Great. Uh, That's the only fact that I've read so far. But uh, like I said, I'm going to read more in depth about these guys and uh, get to know them. Get to know this team a little bit better, just like I did with a team we'll talk about in just a bit. Our last one is what I think is the most interesting one, which is Clayton Thorson, a quarterback from Northwestern. And the reason I think it's interesting is because of what... Uh, Donovan McNabb said about how uh, how once might need to prove himself or else someone is going to get picked. And would you look at that, we get a quarterback. I'm not saying that Carson Wentz isn't going to be great. And I'm not saying that he's not going to be one of the biggest pieces to this puzzle that is a championship winning team. Uh, but... He does need to prove himself. I still have some doubts, but I would love to be proven wrong. It's great. I'm I'm not going to bet against the guy because uh, I know he has the ability to be an elite quarterback. But at the same time, come on, bud. Now you got to do something. Now you got to work. Um. But that's that's just the NFL. We do have one last sport to talk about. I'm very excited about it. I'm excited about all of these games, and I'm especially excited because last week we pulled out a win, a win in a place that a lot of people didn't think we could get a win out of. But we were able to get a win out of Toronto. Now, it wasn't the prettiest thing, but we were able to do it. Now, I I remember sitting there, it was pretty astonishing that uh, we were able to keep them under 39 points in the first half, uh, just considering that they scored 39 points in the first quarter in uh, the first game, which was a tough loss on Saturday. Not what I wanted to see in one of my Dr. PhD picks of the week. But 
uh, we were able to get that back on Monday, and it was a pretty good statement game, I think, in the fact of, like, they they came out of the gate scoring absolutely, I'll say, taking it to us, I guess, in, in Saturday's game. And uh, they played us real well. They outplayed us. And uh, that's why we got the loss. That's what happens. That's sports. But we came back. We said, we're going to play way harder defense. We're going to shut you down. And we're going to make it really tough for you in uh, in this first half. We're going to make it real tough for you in you know this game, in this series, I guess. And... The only time that the statement like didn't really come across was in the second half. Just because, well, for the most part, we were able to keep the lead. It just seemed like everything got really relaxed. We we snuck by is is kind of what I'm thinking. It I don't know, it didn't sit right. The the last part of the game was rough to watch. It kept me on my edge of the, on the edge of my seat, but the problem is it just it it made me have some questions. I'm glad that we got the win, and I'm glad that we were able to keep them defensively bound. I guess I don't know how I want to phrase that, but regardless. It's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what we do at home, which is what we have this week. Uh, we have two home games and an away game. Uh, tonight is the first one. Uh, going to be very important. Going to be very important to see what the boys do. Sunday is when we get to uh, go after the Raptors again at home. And then Tuesday, we're back in Toronto so uh, some pretty pretty important games here. If you're going to any of them, make sure to keep that energy. Pass it on to the Sixers. I would love to see this team do some incredible stuff, just like I would love to see every Philadelphia team do some incredible stuff. Because that's what we do. We love our Philadelphia sports. I love our Philadelphia sports. And if you're listening to this, I assume you do as well but that's been the week that's been the week coming up as well let me know what you think let me know what some of your picks are as for the doctor phd picks of the week i'm gonna go with um probably the sixers game tonight it's it's mostly gonna be the sixers until uh until some new information comes along uh as for pick number two it's going to go to the Union. They're absolutely on a roll. And I would love to see this roll continue on. And for pick number three, pick number three is, like I said, that's always going to be the wild card, is going to be an artist known as Grandson. Uh, Grandson is a rock indie. He's an alt-rock kind of artist who makes songs with awesome guitar um fitting drum beats like rap drum hip-hop drums and uh and then like a dubstep kind of riff style to him this is why i'm saying check him out because i'm not going to be able to describe him as good as he actually is but he is worth checking out so go ahead and do that we got the sixers we got the union we got grandson and we got a great week up ahead. I have been Dr. PhD. If you want to follow me on any social media, mostly going to be Twitter. It's going to be at Dr. PhD, D-O-C-T-E-R-P-H-D. And if you want to follow the podcast, that's going to be Orange Line Pod, uh, spelled exactly the way you would think. But I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you are here as well. If you're uh, If you're watching on YouTube, bye. This is the end of the show. Um, and if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Play or any other kind of thing for podcast listening, thanks. I really appreciate it. 
other than that, I hope you have a great week. Um, I ramble, as always, but I'll see you next week. Have a good one.